Okay. Finally, I think we're in business. All right. So let us join together in our call to worship. I am the Lord your God, who brought you up out of the land of Egypt. Open your mouth wide, and I will fill it. I would feed you with the finest of the wheat, and with honey from the rock I will satisfy you. Let us join in hymn number 523, Saranam, Saranam, which means refuge. Jesus, Savior, Lord, lo, to thee I fly, Saranam, Saranam, Saranam. Thou the rock, my refuge is higher than I, Saranam, Saranam, Saranam. In the midst of foes I cry to thee. Savior, Lord, Lord, to Thee I fly, Saranam, Saranam, Saranam. Thou the rock, my refuge is higher than I, Saranam, Saranam, Saranam. Oh, that I my vows to Thee may pay, and that by Thy faithfulness to me May live and on thy love my burdens lay. Saranam, Saranam, Saranam. Jesus, Savior, Lord, Lord, to thee I fly. Saranam, Saranam, Saranam. Now the rock, my refuge, is higher than I. Saranam, Saranam, Saranam. Amen. The rock that is higher than I, our refuge in all our distress. Let us now turn to God in prayer as we join in that prayer, the congregational prayers that's printed in your bulletin. O oh God in heaven, we know you are keeping a watch over all the earth. We know you see when we falter and stumble. You know when we put other gods before you, when we rise to provide our own way and leave you out of everything. O oh God, our Father, help us to see the error of our ways and return to you in faith. For we know you are gracious and merciful and will open your hand to provide everything we need when we put you first. You are great, O oh God, and your love for us is without bounds. We thank and praise you in the name of your precious Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. And as we continue in a spirit of prayer, I will ask if there are other needs to share than what we have before us on the prayer list. Yes. My niece recently closed, fell down the stairs, and spent the first for her sister, Aunt Mira. Her sister, her aunt, fell into the prayer meeting, and she had to play with the clothes. But she wanted to go to the Okay, Lisa Oaks, um, Janet's niece fell down the stairs and broke both her wrist and her ankle 
had surgery on both and uh, plates put in. So we need to keep her in our prayers for a time. Are there others? Just don't know word on, on uh, Jackie as far as whether the problem she still continues to be considerably underweight and uh, under the weather, but still no answers yet from the doctors. Okay, so we continue to keep Jackie in our prayers. Yes, Gail. I'll just put my friend Frank Gross on my parents and I received word that she has come. Okay. So now we, we will pray for the family of Fran Gross. My cousin, Your cousin Carol, she broke her femur <laughs> a week ago yesterday. Oh no, it was me, her sister, three months after me, and now her. Carol it was? Carol, yep. Broken femur? Yep. And she got a hip in there too somewhere. <laughs> oh. <laughs> mm -hmm. and she has a rod and a plate. Oh. Yeah. Pastor Dan, I'd like to add uh, Dr. Farouk going in September 7th for a valve replacement. Dr. Farouk. Is that a heart valve? Okay. Are there others? And Pastor Dan, um, yesterday I was visiting with Brian. He was very sleepy. I could not wake him up. And he um, a seizure so he's just a little off and i i can't see his the visual of him this morning so hopefully you can <laughs> he may be sleeping he is yeah he's over on the on my screen and, and your screen over down on the lower right hand yeah oh. for some reason it's not letting me hmm. Uh, okay, but he is with us. Yeah, I can see that he's he's there, but I couldn't get a visual. Get a picture. Hmm. I'm on a different computer. I don't know. Okay, a little quirky. All right, that happens. Jenna. <laughs> yeah, I'd like to add to the prayer list. Uh, Don Juan, the uh, father of a uh, very good friend of mine, in the of our ninety-three. Uh, bladder cancer and it's going to be spreading for the workers. It's not optimal. So, my also former football player, Mike. Hmm. Okay. So, Don Bond. Bond. All right. And, um, we have good news on your son's family. Yes. Michael. All past okay. So we, we enlisted um, Michael, Melissa, Isaac, Kevin, and Isabel. Kevin. 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 Not Kevin, Evan. Not Kevin, Kevin. Okay. All right. I don't know where, where Kevin came from, but. <laughs> Uh, maybe my ears last week. Um, so praise God, the family has made it through COVID and is on the mend. So we'll keep them on for another week just to make sure. So if there are no others, then let us continue in the spirit of prayer. 
Heavenly Father, we do thank you for your um, work in our lives through the uh, wishes for our friends and family that you've uh, brought to our attention on your prayer list. We, we thank you for those um, who have come from a place of needing healing to a place of being healed. We especially thank you for, um, for Marsha today that her uh, PT is all done and uh, she's ready to go forth and, and, um, uh, and strengthen what uh, has been mended. And Lord, we uh, lift up uh, her um, cousin, Carol, for a broken femur. Bones seem to be an issue around uh, on these days. Uh, so we ask that you would be with Carol as she goes through the any needed surgery and um, and physical therapy as she recovers from that. We lift to you, Dr. Farouk, who's gone in for a, or going in for a valve replacement. We ask that you um, guide the doctors in the surgery and bring him to a quick and full recovery. Lord, we continue to lift up Jackie as um, the doctors continue to try and discover why she has lost so much weight and is not feeling up to par. So we ask for wisdom and for guidance for those that are seeking an answer. And we lift up Brian to you this morning, especially as he is um, experiencing some episodes of seizure. And we ask that you would be with him as, um, and to bring him past those. We lift up Don Bond this morning with the bladder cancer uh, that is inoperable. We ask that you be there with him to comfort and to bring him peace in the midst of his uh, struggle with that. And uh, we thank you for the family uh, of Michael and Melissa that you would, you have brought them through a, a, an episode of COVID passing in the family, but now they've been healed and on the mend and continue to be that way. So we ask for your continued presence with them as they fully recover from that. And Lord, we uh, lift up the family of Fran Gross, uh, has, who has gone home to be with you. We ask that you comfort those that are left behind, uh, and the family and friends that uh, are mourning her passing. And also we lift up this morning, Lisa Oaks, as she recovers from a fall and broken bones with surgery and um, plates. We thank you that you would be with her for a quick healing as she mends under your care. We thank you, Lord, for all of the ways that you are with us and continue to be with us in these days. And we, we praise you and thank you for your son, Jesus, who came to be with us as one of us, to identify with us, and for us to be able to identify more fully with you. We thank you that he came and he healed and he presented himself as, um, as a part of you, as fully you in a human body that he came to teach us and 
especially to teach us how to pray. So we enter now into that prayer that he taught his disciples saying, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And Lord, we do thank you for your word. And we come now to your word in the Gospel of Luke. As we read these words of Jesus. From Luke 14, verses 1 and 7 through 14. On one occasion, when Jesus was going to the house of a leader of the Pharisees to eat on the Sabbath, they were watching him closely. When he noticed how the guests, of on, how the guests chose places of honor, he told them a parable. When you are invited by someone to a wedding banquet, do not sit down in the place of honor. In case someone more distinguished than you has been invited by the host. And the host who invited both of you may come and say to you, give this person your place. And then in disgrace, you would start to take the lowest place. But when you are invited, go and sit down at the lowest place. So that when your host comes, he may say to you, friend, move up higher. Then you will be honored in the presence of all who sit at the table with you. For all who exalt themselves will be humbled. And those who humble themselves will be exalted. He said also to the one who invited him, when you give a luncheon or a dinner, do not invite your friends or your brothers or your relatives or rich neighbors in case they in, may invite you in return and you would be repaid. But when you give a banquet, invite the poor, the crippled, the lame and the blind and you will be blessed because they cannot repay you, or you will be repaid at the resurrection of the righteous. May we hear in these words the gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God in deep. And now we move in the scripture to the book of Hebrews. We've been looking at this for the past few weeks. And we're now in the concluding chapter of the letter to the Hebrews. And it's full of practical theology or answers to the question of what does the Christian do to demonstrate his or her belief to the world? It is the practical application of faith and the assurance of God's presence when you do. It asks the people to imitate their leaders who lived that way, to consider the outcome of their lives, and to believe their Lord Jesus never changes and is the source of their strength, of their leaders forever. The concluding verses ask the people to acknowledge their God with a sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving because such a thing pleases God who invited you into the life you are now leading. 
the sacrifice is, of course, a reference to the practice of offering to God the things that one is grateful for in a way that elevates God above the thing that is brought and refers to the sacrificial system laid out in the book of Leviticus in our Bibles. So let's now hear the words from the letter to the Hebrews. Let mutual love continue. Do not neglect to show hospitality to strangers. For by doing that, some have entertained angels without knowing it. Remember those who are in prison, as though you were in prison with them. Those who are being tortured, as though you yourselves were being tortured. Let marriage be held in honor by all, and let the marriage bed be kept undefiled. For God will judge fornicators and adulterers. Keep your lives free from the love of money and be content with what you have. For he said, quoting from the song, I will never leave you or forsake you. So we can say with confidence, as the psalmist did, the Lord is my helper. I will not be afraid. What can anyone do to me? Remember your leaders, those who spoke the word of God to you. Consider the outcome of their way of life and imitate their faith. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. Through him, then, let us continually offer a sacrifice of praise to God. That is the fruit of lips that confess his name. Do not neglect to do good and to share what you have. For such sacrifices are pleasing to God. May we hear in these words, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So let us join now in hymn number 432, Jesu, Jesu. Jesu, Jesu, fill us with your love, show us to serve the neighbors we have from you. Kneel at the feet of his friends, silently washes their feet, master who acts as a slave to them. So, Jesu, fill us with your Show us how to serve the neighbors we have from you. These are the ones we should serve. These are the ones we should love. All these are neighbors to us and you. Jesu, Jesu, fill us with your love. Show us how to serve the neighbors we have from you. neighbors we have from you. Amen. The sermon today, I titled, Some Have Entertained Angels. Have you ever thought much about the things you cannot see? Because there is a whole realm of the spiritual that cannot be perceived 
by the human senses, at least most of the time. And how about the things that take place between people that we can't see? Emotions like love and fear, joy and sadness, depression and doubt. Oh, those things can be expressed in words and experienced in the flesh, but they are not something we can see with the eyes or hear with the ears or touch with the hands. All of them exist on a level that cannot be physically interacted with. But we can usually tell by facial expressions and bodily positions when someone is dealing with some sort of emotion. And we are told in various parts of scripture to express ourselves to one another through the means of those emotions or sometimes beyond the emotions to turn those adjectives into verbs, turn those descriptives into actions. Today's passage begins with one of those emotions that becomes an action. Let mutual love continue, says the author here. Mutual love is the fulfillment of that first commandment of relationship that Jesus gave us when he left the earth. The way he put it was, love one another. That command proceeds from the love of God that we are called to in the correct order of love. Love of God leads to love of one another. But how can we express that love that we have for our brothers and sisters in Christ? Hebrews gives us one way of that expression here in this passage. Do not neglect to show hospitality, he says. Hospitality is an expression of love in the action of making someone comfortable in your presence. Hospitality is opening yourself to another, sharing what you have with the other person, perhaps by sharing your food or home with that other person and sharing your love and care for them by giving of yourself and your means. That giving is a demonstration of your care, not a hoarding of your possessions to please yourself alone. Mutual love is a giving to each other. Maybe because you have something in common, such as your relationship with Jesus Christ. After all, this letter was written to people who had just that between one another. But it was written to them who had something more than that. It was written to those who had drifted from the purity of that relationship, that relationship with the Lord, into things that defiled and polluted the relationship with God and consequently with one another. This is a reminder to bring back that purity into their relationships. That mutuality was a call to regard each other through the relationship with Christ, that thing that they all had in common. But the author of this letter took it beyond the common relationship that all of them had with one another. This letter called on them to extend that hospitality to strangers. You never know who you will meet on the path of life. Strangers can become those who walk the path with you. Partners in your life's work or partners in your life in all its aspects. I don't think many among us 
who are married at least, grew up with our spouses and knew and loved them from the beginning of our lives. I never knew my wife until she tripped over me in fellowship time after church one Sunday when she visited my church seeking a new place to worship with her kids. We were strangers to one another at that time anyway. And I think she probably thought me stranger than most. I think I've told you that story before. Neither one of us knew at the time that I had found my angel on earth. But the writer of this book says that by entertaining strangers, we might actually encounter angels from heaven. The writer who knew the history of Israel more than most was making reference to a couple of stories from Israel's past in which angels did appear in physical form to people of their day. One of those episodes was the time when the three strangers approached Abraham and Sarah in the desert before either of them knew that they would have a child in the not too distant future. Abraham offered these strangers a good meal and satisfying drink and extended an offer of shelter from their journey. It was these three strangers who gave this old couple hope that in a year they would have a child of their own. After trying alternative ways of fulfilling God's promise of progeny for almost a hundred years for Adam or for Abraham and 90 for Sarah, well, Sarah laughed at that promise. And when Isaac came along a year later, that's how he got his name, which means laughter. These messengers of God to those people of the desert gave them hope, which is what messengers from God do for us. And now the other story mentioned as a reference by the writer was the story of Lot. When two angels appeared at the gate of the city of Sodom. Lot approached the two and invited them in to dine with his family. But they responded that they would spend time in the city square instead. After prevailing on them for a time, they finally agreed to come in to his own dwelling. The men in the town sought to prevail upon these angels in their own way. And they were blinded, these men in the town, to prevent it, allowing the angels to escape after first warning Lot of the pending disaster on the region. That stranger that shows up at your door unannounced may be bringing you a hopeful message from God. So be prepared to entertain. Of course, that wasn't the only practical application of mutual love the writer gave here. He also left us with these other steps. Remember those who are in prison as though you were in prison with them. Now, prison ministry is not something we usually think of when offering love to our neighbors. After all, those in prison are there for a reason, for violating societal rules, for doing things to harm and not build up. It is a risk to enter a prison to entertain and minister to the residents. In one of my past lives in ministry, I was singing and playing guitar and piano in a music ministry 
that at one time embarked on bringing music behind the prison walls. We had a great time with prisoners and guards in one minimum security facility. Booked a concert in a maximum security prison and waited with anticipation for the day to arrive. But that time never did materialize because prison security uncovered a plot among the prisoners to kidnap a group scheduled to perform, complete with homemade weapons fashioned out of smuggled materials by family members of the prisoners. I don't think I've thought much about prison ministry since. I don't like to put myself in situations where I might become a victim of violence, at least knowingly. But ministry behind the walls always comes with risk and you can't go in blindly. And it is advised here in Hebrews to do ministry in such settings. And then he lists another connected with prison Identify with those who are being tortured as though you yourselves were being tortured. This idea of being tortured is not too appealing to me either. And is certainly an extension of prison ministry. When you think of being in prison, it suggests some kind of torture at least a mental breaking down of will. Torture is not something we think of when we consider imprisonment in this country in our day, but physical torture in the early days of the church was much more common. And in some places in the world today, it still is. The writer of this book wants us to put ourselves in the place of these victims of imprisonment and torture and see those in such situations with compassion for them as people loved by God. We must identify with them because we were once in their place too, imprisoned in sin before we knew better. Someone identified with us and shared the message of salvation and deliverance. And we can pass it on to others. So though the prison we enter for the benefit of those who live there may not be a physical one, We need to be aware of the mental prisons in which others are living. He continues in another vein, let marriage be held in honor by all and let the marriage bed be kept undefiled for God will judge fornicators and adulterers. Now there's a practical step the writer brings up that I can identify with. Being married now for 42 years and counting, let marriage be held in honor by all and let the marriage bed be kept undefiled. I can't even imagine giving myself to another like I give myself to my wife. Now God's gift of the two becoming one is a mystery. And I can't understand it intellectually, but it's manifested in an ever deepening love between us. I understand how Paul can see marriage as a picture of God's love for his people or why the church is considered the bride of Christ in Paul's writings. Marriage is an institution that should be held in honor because it is a picture of God's love for his children of faith. 
faithfulness in marriage is a picture of God's faithfulness to his children. It is in a term not often used in today's speech, sacred. We vow to love and honor one another the day we stand before our friends and church family to unite in marriage. And keeping that pledge reflects God's glory to the world around us. Marriage is highly esteemed by God because of its unique character as a picture of God's unending love. In some of the stories of the Old Testament, a violation of the vows of marriage is used as a picture of Israel's turning away from God and its consequences of displacement and living in a foreign land, the punishment for the violation. No more peace for the people that turn away from God. But thankfully, God is also one of great mercy to those who have learned their lesson and repent of that turning away. And finally here, keep your lives free from the love of money and be content with what you have. For he said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. This is a fairly obvious command for peace among those who have taken up their cross and follow Christ. Looking to pad the savings at the expense of others borders on that command not to covet what your neighbor has. We do need money in our society to pay our bills, to have a place to live, and food to eat. But looking to money as the source of our security is missing the mark. God has all the earth to provide for our needs. And God knows what we do need. God is more than willing to give it all to us that we would be content to live in peace and security with God and with one another. The world would have to seek more than our daily bread, but God knows what we need every day we live. And God knows the days we have left to enjoy. So why not be content? All along life's journey, as we put ourselves out there for our neighbors and those in need around us, we just might be extending that ministry to a heavenly visitor. That person we help might be a messenger from God or one bringing a test we need to advance properly on our life's path. We need not shrink back from doing for others because we think our own blessings are not enough. Because what we have is a gift from God and we should give back out of what we have. God will bless the release. And we just might get a message of comfort or assurance from God's very messenger we aided. So let the stranger be your friend and the recipient of your ministry. Amen. Amen. I would invite Jeff and Barbara to share some music as we take up our offering this morning. Jimmy Davis and uh, Dottie Rambo who sang with Bill Gaither for many years. 
wrote a wonderful piece of music called Sheltered in the Arms of God. I feel the touch of hands so kind and tender. They lead in me in paths that I must try. I have no fear when Jesus walks beside me. For I'm sheltered in the arms of God. So let the storms rage high, the dark clouds rise. They won't worry me, for I'm sheltered safe within the arms of God. He walks with me, and not a birth shall harm me, for I'm sheltered in the arms of God. Soon I shall from heaven's portals. Come home, my child, it's the last mile you must trod. I have no fear and wake in God's new heaven. Sheltered safe within the arms of God. So let the storms rage high, the dark clouds rise. They won't worry me, for I'm sheltered safe within the arms of God. He walks with me, and not of earth shall harm me, for I'm sheltered in the arms of God. Praise God from all blessings flow. Heavenly Father, we do thank you for the gifts that you brought forth from us this morning. We ask that you guide those gifts to the place where they are most useful. And we trust that what we have given you is going to be used by you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let us join in our final hymn today, number 463, Lord, Speak to Me. Lord, speak to me that I may speak in living echoes of thy tone. As thou hast sought, so let me seek thine erring children lost and lone. Oh, teach me, Lord, that I may teach the precious things thou dost impart, and wing my words that they may reach the hidden depths of many a heart.
Now may the God of love who sits in heaven with Jesus, our Lord and Savior, Redeemer, and may the Holy Spirit that proceeds from them to the earth and to us be with you now and forevermore. Amen. Now let us end our time together with our congregational prayer for renewal, saying, O oh Christ, our all, help us to see you in everything we encounter in this life. Help us, O oh Lord, to put away all things that distract us from you. Help us to put a watch on our words and use them to encourage our neighbors. Make us an example of what it is to be changed follower of God. From you, O oh Lord, we draw our strength, and in you make our lives. Amen. Now go in peace and the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.